Number 32. Describe how graphical methods can be used to determine the order of a reaction and its rate constant from a series of data that includes the concentration of A at varying times. Okay, so we have a big mess over here, but I promise by the end of this video we will understand everything that's going on here. Now all we have to do is basically talk about how using different types of graphs, that's why there's different types of graphs here, uh, by using different types of graphs, we can find out a specific order of a reaction and its rate constant. Now, generally speaking, if you are uh, using graphs to find out what your order is for your reaction, you are going to know the concentration of a substance, they labeled it as A, at different times. So, generally speaking, if A is your reactant, let's say that A yields B, right? And we're basically just doing an experiment to just see what's the concentration. Generally, concentration is molarity, right? So we're just interested in finding out what's going on with the molarity of A at varying times. Now, generally, when you do collect this data, right, we, we can notice or we can see, right, that since A is a reactant, we can make a hypothesis that as time is increasing and more of A is converting into B, what's going on with the molarity or the concentration of A? Yeah, as time goes on, as time is increasing, that concentration should be dropping. So there's an inverse relationship between time and concentration. So maybe let's just say, maybe let's just say something like this, right? Let's just say we have a couple of different values, right? Let's just say that we have zero seconds, uh, we have one second, two seconds, and three seconds, right? And the concentration of A started, uh, you know, maybe 1.0, was the initial amount of molarity at that time. And then as time is increasing from one to two to three, this number is getting lower and lower. So we'll do, I don't know, 0 0.5, 0 point, I don't know, uh, three, and 0 point, I have no idea. Maybe I'll put this down here. We'll say 0 0.21. Now I'm just making these numbers up. Um, I have no idea whether these numbers actually, I should, I should give you a realistic idea. So maybe we'll say 0.25 and then 0.125. Okay. So there's my four trials. I noticed that as my starting concentration was one molarity, but then as one second went on, it dropped down to, you know, 0.5 and then 0.25 at two seconds, 0.125 and et cetera, et cetera. So now, for all the data that you have collected, we are going to say, well, what order is this reaction? And what you're gonna do is you're going to plot these points. Now, me personally, I would always start off with the zero order reaction and see if it fits the mold. But if it doesn't, then you move on to your first order reactions and then your second order reactions. Now, in this example, if we actually did plot out these values, right, 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 to 0 0.25 to 0 0.25, 125, this is slowly decreasing at a constant rate. And the zero order reaction is always a graph of your concentration over time. So you don't have to do anything with these concentration values, just plot them. And I plot them. Let's just say that this was one, this is point. 0.5, then we have 0.25, and then we have 0.125, and I can make a straight line. Woohoo! If your concentration comes out with a straight line, that is a zero order reaction. And your rate constant would be rate equals K times the concentration of A to the zero. And remember, anything that's raised to the zero is raised to the, you know, just one. So this is basically the same thing as just saying rate equals K. So it's up to you whether you wanna say it's raised to the zero or you could just say rate equals K. 
Now, if we wanted to find out the rate constant from this graph, it looks like it's a negative slope, right? It's a linear line. It's a negative slope. Just know that this slope is the negative k value. k, your rate constant, should always be a positive value. The negative is taking into account that it is a negative slope. So if you do find the slope, you take two points on this graph, and you find the slope, that's going to be a negative value. But remember that k rate constants are always positive. So just make a positive. And that's how you find the rate constant for a zero order reaction. Now let's just say that these weren't so nice. And maybe when I plot the points, I get something like this. That's not a straight line. So I say to myself, okay, it's definitely not zero order. So I go to my next equation that I know. And the next equation goes with first order. Now, this is where you have to start changing your y-axis. Instead of plotting concentration values, I have to take the ln of each individual value and plot that number. And if I plot the ln of these numbers with time, because that's what the, the axes are, right? ln of a over time. If I get a um, linear line there, that means that it's first order. And then A would be raised to the first in this case. Same exact idea. It's a negative slope, a negative slope. So it doesn't matter whether you're zero order or first order. That slope, since it's negative, it's going to be equal to negative K. So if you wanted to find the rate constant, you take the two points that are on that graph, find the slope, it is negative, so you just undo the negative, right? The negative accounts for that the slope is a negative value. Remember that for all of these, your k values are supposed to be positive. But now, let's just say that I did that, and ugh, I still don't get a, a, a linear line. The idea here is that you have to see a linear line. But if I do the ln of a, and it comes out like this, well, that, that's not really a function, but it comes out, you know, not linearly, you say, okay, well, it can't be first order. The final one that we should know a graph for is the second order reaction. And this is now where your units are one over a versus time. So you're going to go back to these values and find out what's one over 1.0, one over 0.5, one over 0.25, one over 0.125, and plot those values. And since this is the last graph, you should know, it should be a linear line. And let's see now. This is the only one in which your linear line is increasing. So would my slope equal negative k? No. This one, the slope just equals k. Because it's positive, and your rate constant k should always be positive. And just know that since you have a linear line on this graph, that just means that your total order for the whole reaction just has to equal 2. So you could see, you know, a squared, but, you know, in certain situations, maybe you have two reactants or something, right? That could, that could be a total of 2, right, because it's 1 plus 1. But generally speaking with these, you know, just to make it simple, we start off with one reactant, and it would be raised to the second. And that's basically it. So we're going to be doing a lot of questions, going through the graphs, seeing those linear lines. And once you spot out a linear line with their appropriate axes, all well, you just got to keep out, you know, keep watch for are the y-axis, because for each one of them, the time is the same. You do not touch these values. That's your x-axis. All you have to do is just change your concentrations depending on if your first zero order wasn't linear, then you move on to the first order. If it's still not linear, then you, you know, say a good word and hopefully the third one comes out linear. If you find out that you don't have any linear lines, I would go back. Something definitely happened. There's got to be a linear line for one of these three, especially if your teacher professor only wants you to know up to second order reactions and graphs. But I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, I'll talk to you soon. 
And I hope you're having a great day out there. Keep studying. Always keep learning. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.